Hey everybody, it's EK with EK Gorman Designs and I am coming in today with a do-it-yourself Christmas home decor idea with craft, uh, with craft collabs. We are hopping all over the internet with all kinds of holiday decor items that you should get involved with. I am pulling out my Tim Holtz clean foam stamps. I've gotten really into these clean foam stamps because you can use both ink and paint on them and they are just as effective both ways. So today I'm showing you kind of how to play with these stamps a little bit and create two uniquely different ideas um, for the holidays. One is some mixed media art and the other is a little bit of wrapping paper. I've pulled out some basic tissue paper. It's on a roll. I bought it at a craft store. I've had it forever. There's so much that I've literally used it forever. And I'm stamping onto it with these foam cling stamps. And you can see with the Distress Oxide, it leaves really nice layering. And these stamps are actually meant to be genuinely, truly labor layered. If you've never wrapped in this tissue before, it's actually kind of fun. Yes, it's a little transparent, but that kind of makes the whole thing a little bit more entertaining. That you can almost th see through the paper, but you can't really see through the paper. And isn't the idea of stamping your own wrapping paper just like yummy. Like I love the idea of creating my own paper. Now I'm not going to do this for every gift, but for some of the really special ones, especially something that is handmade and has paint on it and I don't want the paint to stick to anything, I'm going to put it around this this tissue paper before I maybe wrap it in a bigger box just to help protect it. So I did pull out a couple different shades of Distress Oxide and layered them and I used some of this gold uh, Dovecraft ink just to kind of stamp into the background. I pulled out just a little bit more gold ink and just finished it off trying to fill in all my negative space with fun stamped images. And tell me this isn't just festive and holiday and bright and fun. Anyway, I'm going to set this aside and get to my main project. I have this artboard, and it is an artboard, but it's a piece of wood. And I'm pulling out some heavy bodied brown paints in two different shades. And I'm going to create a stain effect onto this wood artboard. All, I've to need, all you need to do is create an effective stain appearance. Is use a baby wipe and some heavy bodied acrylic paint and blend it over the wood. Now I used two colors because I wanted to warm up that dark brown with the lighter brown. And I think I got a really nice effect. I am going to go over the sides with that dark brown just so I can create kind of a natural frame on the side of the of the wood. Um, yes, I did get a splinter, if you're wondering. The wood was very raw on the edges, and it went right through my baby wipe and gave me a splinter. I'm going to give the wood one last run over with a clean portion of my wet wipe just to kind of pull back any extra paint. So now I'm going to add some molding paste to it, and this is my golden mold molding paste, and I forgot that the golden is more gel-like than I prefer, so I scraped off what I had and pulled out my Liquitex molding paste. This is a lot more heavy bodied than the Golden. It's amazing you take two different brands and the molding paste is completely different. But this is my favorite heavy body molding paste. Now you're going to watch me fits and fuss with the molding paste for quite some time. I am literally using a palette knife to paint with, like your walls, like to texturize your house's walls. It is a great tool, it's nice and wide, and it's creating a nice flat surface with that molding paste. So this is a juxtaposition that you can totally make fun of me for. I wanted both a flat molding paste with texture feel. Yeah, that's an oxymoron. But I did grab my, my palette knife and added more texture in and then scraped back again to make it nice and smooth and flat. It's silly, but the effect I like in the end came off really strong. Um, to get the nice smooth, you have to make sure your pellet knife is nice and clean. So you'll notice I keep wiping it off with the baby wipe. It's, it's, it's to make sure that I'm not smearing dried. I did use a little bit of that golden medium on the corner. Now I'm going to switch gears. And there's a reason and method to my madness. But I've pulled out my gel plate. And I've pulled out a bright tone of red, a really dark oxidized tone of red, and some Payne's Gray. And I'm trying to come up with a nice effect of ombre where it's nice and bold and red and then there's a heavy shadow on the bottom because I want to pull back out my ornament stamps and stamp it into the red paint and then put it onto my wood canvas. 
So this is the hope and plan. No, I've never tried this. So you're watching me literally experiment and fail. I knew I needed more paint. Normally when you use your gel plate, you don't want tons of plate. Well, plate. You don't want tons of paint. Well, here I realized I needed a much heavier layer of paint than I normally would put onto that gel plate. So here I am adding a really thick, heavy layer. And yes, I pulled out a piece of scratch paper just to rub off everything extra on from my uh, roller. So I tried one more time, this time rolling the paint directly onto the foam sponge and it's perfect. It's exactly what I want. It's got that heavy dark shadow on the bottom as if it was a three dimensional ornament. So I'm gonna reload my gel plate and try it one more time. So I can make a nice smooth rub and then take literally the roller and rub straight onto my thing, really making sure I cover it. Fingers crossed everybody, you can watch me hesitate and be afraid, but it works out really nicely. Look, look it worked, yay! So I'm going to clean off my roller and save that paper for later. And I hate to waste ink, so I did definitely pull out a piece of water paper color and press down to get the rest of the paint off of my... There we go. Never know what you're going to use it for, always keep it around. I pulled out some iridescent gold paint from Golden and the ornament topper. And again, it's that moment of hesitation, well, it's going to work, but it did. It was really nice and thick and heavy. Um, and again, I hate wasting paint, so I pulled out that red piece of paper that I, I took my brayer and rolled everything off on and stamped gold stars all over it. It's actually, I'm really excited because now I can make a card out of that piece of paper. Or actually, I can probably make a couple cards out of the paper and have some nice holiday card stock that I created out of paint. And again, I'm kind of just playing around with the extra paint and this foam uh, stamp set. But here we go, we're transitioning back to the main piece of art. This is my Stabilo uh, pencil. It's a water soluble pencil, so you can actually erase it with water. And I'm just sketching out the branches for my full piece. I took some burnt umber, it's a different shade of brown than I used for the stain. And I'm just hand painting in over the Stabilo. What I love about these Stabilo markers is if you make a mistake, you can erase them with water. And it adds a shadowing effect where the branch is, just so it's kind of becomes dimensional. Yes, it's fussy. My paint was a little more heavy bodied than I wanted. So I'm struggling a little bit to get my lines, my branch lines the way I wanted them to. In the end, it works out, but it's fussy and I'm being particular. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm overthinking it. it we're not going to lie. But I do like the shape my branches came out to, and I love the idea of how everything worked out. So I'm taking some deep green paint to add the branches. Now this is, again, still part of that stamp set from Tim Holtz. I, I think it's a fun stamp set, and you can really utilize a whole bunch of different ideas with it. I hadn't done this before, so I'm not going to lie. It's not going exactly how I want. It seems messy and and it's not working. When I took the pine leaf stamps off the acrylic block and just started stamping it with my hands, really controlling and manipulating what part went onto the page, the effect started working and it started looking more natural and realistic as opposed to a stamped image. Uh, there's one thing more I'm going to do to it that's really going to add effect. I pulled out a bunch of different snow effect stamps I have. This one is golden thin acrylic and a needlepoint. This is snow um, effect from Stamperia. No, not Stamperia. Stamperia. It's a snow effect. The My white acrylic pen no longer really works. You can see it filled miserably. And this last one just wasn't opaque enough. So I went with the golden thin body acrylic with that sharp needle nose application tool and the snow pen. I went first into the pine needles and really just dusted everything with snow. I didn't love how the snow pen worked on the branch. It looked too artificial. I loved how it came out on the pine needles, but the branch was, it was not effective. I knew the ornament needed 
a highlight, a really good highlight, and I'm just kind of paring it down so it looks natural. And I pulled out the snow pin and added that to the branch, and like, I really liked so much more how that one came out. Ironically, with snow, more is more. It's not a less is more situation. Finally, to finish up this little canvas, I'm pulling out some gold crackle and just applying it to the corners. I wanted, I didn't want the gold of the ornaments hanger to be the only gold thing on the canvas. So by adding the gold crackle to the corners, I think I really got the effect I wanted just so everything ties together nicely in the end. Um, I love this gold cracker crackle. When it dries, it'll have a slight antiquing crackle to it, which I think is a fun effect to such a natural looking piece of art. Now you're wondering, how do you hang this up? There is no, you know, it's a flat piece of board. Well, I've got these little screw, uh, screws that you can, they're actually literally meant to hang um, picture frames from the wall. And you just screw it into the wood. They're bigger than they should be, so I can't screw them in as far as I normally would or I risk going through the board. And I pulled out a hanger and just literally like added it to the back of the canvas and just twisted it in. And now this little frame can hang anywhere the uh, person who receives it wants it to go. Finally, I'm gonna take my wrapping paper and a little bit of tape and just add it to the piece. So there you go, perfect little holiday gift for anybody. It's a fun piece that says winter more than Christmas maybe, except for the ornament. But I think you really could play around with this piece all year long. I hope you got had fun seeing, seeing how I created this project. You'll have to let me know if you like the canvas or the wrapping paper more in the comments below. And make sure you continue hopping along on this Craft Collabs uh, holiday do-it-yourself hop and uh, share a little love with everybody along the way. Until then, happy crafting, everybody.